My name is Margit Mesma. I work in the School of Mathematics here at the University of Leeds. In this video, um, I would like to talk about um, the modulus, which is also referred to sometimes as the absolute value. And in the second part, I would like to discuss an example um, of solving an inequality involving the modulus. But before we do that, I want to just introduce a few remarks, give you a few hints about um, the use of the modulus. So the first one is really just uh, the definition. So the modulus of a number a can be thought of or is the distance of a from the origin, from zero, which, well, which is equal to a if a is positive or if a is non-negative and it's negative a if a is negative, right? Because if a is negative, the negative, the minus a is positive. All right, so thinking about the modulus as the distance from zero sometimes can be useful. The second remark I want to make is um, about the graph of the absolute value function. So if you have a function, this graph, say, looks like this. This is the graph of the function um, y equals f of x. Then, how does the graph of y equals absolute value of f f of x look? Well, what I need to do is I need to take all the values which are negative and make them positive. In other words, flip them over the x-axis. All the positive values can stay the same. So, um, so the graph of y equals absolute value of x will look somewhat like this. Right? Um, so then then this is the graph of y equals modulus f of x, right? So everything, we make everything positive. The third remark I want to make is, is similar to remark one. If you um, look at an expression like this, the modulus of a minus b, which by the way is the same as the, modu as the modulus of b minus a, then this is the distance between a and b. And I will show you in a minute in an example how this can be useful. The fourth remark of property I'd like to point out to you is that um, when solving equations or inequalities, you sometimes find yourself in the situation where you would want to take the square root of a square. So the square root of a squared is the modulus of a, right? That, that uh, I'll also show you in an example how this can be useful. So regarding 3, so an example, Let's say you want to solve something like modulus of 5 minus x is equal to the modulus of x plus 3. So you're trying to find all x which satisfy this equation. Well, you can probably guess the solution, but let's just look at this equation using part 3 here. So what does this say? It says we are looking for all values of x whose distance from 5 is the same as its distance from negative, from minus 3, right? Because after all, the, the right hand side here is the same as x minus minus 3. So it's, this expression is the distance of x from negative 3. So again, we are looking for all x's whose distance from 5 the same as its distance from negative 3. Well, the distance between these two numbers is 8, so the point in the middle, I mean, we're looking for the point in the middle, which is, which is 1, right? So the solution here 
is x equal 1. So purely by looking at it to, in terms of distances, we can right away um, find the solution. By the way, for those of you who are familiar with complex numbers, this applies equally to solving this equation in the complex numbers. So if you think of the x being replaced by a z, and the problem saying, well, find all z's for which this equality holds, it says the same thing. We are looking for all complex numbers whose distance from negative 3 is the same as its distance from 5. And what we would get is just a vertical line. If you think of this as the complex plane, the solution would be all numbers on this vertical line going through um, the point x equal 1. The second example I want to discuss in this context um, really makes use of, of, of number 4. So um, it's another example. If, you, if we have to solve an inequality involving a quadratic, I want a minus here, minus 35, um, and I want it less than 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 4 because I don't like the 4 here as a coefficient of x squared. So this is if and only if, um, referring to the, to the first video about um, inequalities, dividing by 4 is an increasing function. We don't have to change the inequality symbol. So um, we have this is less than 0. Now, what I'm going to do in the next step is called um, completing the square. So I'm going to add here a term that will allow me to write the left-hand side as a square plus a constant. So what I will need is um, the square of half of the coefficient in front of x, so I will need a fourth. And then in order to correct the term, I will have to add a fourth onto this one, um, if you want to subtract the fourth, which makes it um, negative 36 fourths, less than zero. And these three terms become a square, namely x minus a half squared. And this is just minus 9. I'll add 9 on both sides and end up with this inequality. Now, you see, at this stage, I would I want to apply the square root function on both sides, which is okay to do because the left-hand side is a square, therefore it's always positive, and the square root of positive numbers are always defined. The 9 is positive, I can apply the square root. The square root of this square, according to this principle, is the absolute value of x minus half. The square root of 9 is 3. Notice I use the if and only if symbol here. Um, so I have to think about also going from this line to the line up. Going from here to there, I have to square both sides. Squaring the, squ the, the, the quadratic function is decreasing for um, negative values. It's increasing for positive values. But since I'm dealing here with an absolute uh, value, I know this expression is always positive. 3 is positive, so I'm dealing here with the with the um, strictly increasing part of the square function, and therefore I don't need to worry about turning the symbol around. Now, reading this off as a solution here, yeah, it says that I'm looking for all x's whose distance from a half is less than 3, right? So um, if here is 0, here is a half, the numbers whose distance from a half is less than 3 lie between, well, I have to go 3 to the right, so I land at 7 halves, and I have to go 3 to the left, so I land at minus, fi minus 5 halves, and I'm talking now about all the numbers here in between. So the solution here is all x, all x is strictly between negative 5 halves and 7 halves. Right? So you see this is kind of useful here in, 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 in this last step to, to read off the solution.